Have you ever been partway through a plan on a real estate investing deal and then you have to completely pivot and adjust what you're doing to make it work? Well, if you haven't, you eventually will have to. So you'll wanna listen to my good friends, Ray and Joe of BV & Co, explain how they turned a potentially deal-killing scenario into a profitable transaction. Stick around until the end of the video where Ray and Joe share how their development deal could not only be a profitable one for them, but how it can also help a local nonprofit organization with their goals as well. This is the perfect example of what we call a for-purpose business, a profitable business that has a give back component built in. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to create a thousand millionaires through real estate investing. Subscribe not to miss what's coming. And now enjoy the interview. This actually started as just, um, you know, we've talked to you about this many times, but mm -hmm. um, you know, it started as a parking lot that we purchased and the plan was to, to build 25 units on it. And mm -hmm. as we've gotten to know and become part of the community, we've realized, you know, there's a nonprofit that's pretty much right beside us. Um, and there's been opportunity. And sorry to interrupt you, but for context, yeah. you used to work for a, a nonprofit. So definitely yeah. something that you're very aware of and that's right probably have a certain place in your heart for nonprofits. totally yeah. and and i've i've said it before in sense of my whole career has been in nonprofit, and mm. so moving into real estate has been a, a real shift for me mentally mm. and trying to figure out how to move from a, a job that was all about you know raising money and raising and i was a fundraiser mm. corporate fundraiser um to now being like making money for my family that has that was a real shift mm -hmm. um but i think there's a real way to to blend both sides of it and mm -hmm. i know there's so many people in the community that feel the same way yeah. but it's not as obvious as i think we all kind of thought it would be mm -hmm. um and and i want it to be more than just you know i writing a check to a, a charity which is wonderful and lovely but I think we can do more to be part of the solution. Right. So this opportunity presented itself. There's a nonprofit beside our parking lot. Mm. And there were also other properties in and around that vicinity in that same block that came up for sale. And so what it's hopefully turning into now, we don't know for sure. But what we're trying to create is basically a land assembly where we can integrate this nonprofit into part of our uh, development and create a long-term sustainable relationship with them where they are sustained, we are giving back, and it becomes part of the sort of ethos of the development. So with this new um, land assembly, can we break that down just a little bit? How did you find this new development opportunity? I wanted to let you all know about my upcoming development course. This course will teach you the step-by-step -step guide on how you can take on your first or your next development deal from conception all the way to completion. This is a four-month intensive program taught and guided by me. There are live online learning sessions, a three-day in-person training where I will take you to some of our active development sites, and a 12-week group coaching program for supporting you as you start to implement your knowledge. If you're interested in applying, check out the information below. If you'd like a bit of an introduction to development, you can always sign up for my development workshops, which will give you a basic introduction to see if this is the right fit for you or not. Use the promo code YouTube100 and your enrollment is only $95 for the full day session. Check out the information in the description below. And now, back to the interview. The opportunity was really uh, sourced out by our partner that's based in Kingston. So mm -hmm. she brought the opportunity to us and said, you know what, guys, I, I saw this lot. I think there's an opportunity here. The zoning is right. Um, we need to do a slight uh, variance with regards to maybe some more units on it, that sort of thing. So that's how the opportunity came to us. Um, but it's been an interesting road in terms of how this assembly has kind of developed, right? So. That we purchased at the start of the year. The intention was really, as Joe said, like 20 to 25 units. Mm. Um, but we had a bit of a, of a, I don't want to say a roadblock, but a speed bump um, when we approached the city. They liked everything about our proposal. They were all on board. But the main kind of entrance was off or to the main street. And they said, we don't want that. We want you to utilize this kind of rear uh, laneway. So months and months of negotiating with the owners of, of those laneways to see if they would quote unquote play ball, do they want to work with us, everything like that. Um, you know, that was an interesting process. It delayed us a lot. Yeah. Was, it, was, it a, was it a public laneway or like how was the, <clears throat> it private? So this laneway, it, we went out and we got, we got sure. history on it. So uh, our current tenant on the lot is Burton Motors and they're a used car a uh, lot, right? They don't do a ton of traffic there, but mm. you know, they, they sell one or two cars a month kind of thing. 
he's been on there since 86 in terms of his usage of this laneway. So we were like, okay, that's a good timeline. Turns out that we needed two more years. 84 would have given us that legal <laughs> rights now to <laughs> the access of this one. So uh. we even went back previously be, be you know, uh, to that, the owners before he was there. And, and, you know, unfortunately there was never usage of it. So, um, that's where we hit that roadblock, right? Where we don't own this laneway, but it still does service the lot and it's been used for you know, a significant period of time. Mm. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it was, it was kind of a, a non-solution for us to be able to get there, right? But out of that pivots the opportunity of, hold on, there's another you know, uh, parcel that's for sale. Should we put that under contract? And then of those two people that own the laneway or, or the two neighbors of the laneway, we were able to talk to one and, you know, we're in the process of potentially making an offer on their property. So it, it's, it's slower. It's yeah. A it's slow. Process. It's like these ebbs and flows, right? You, you kind of get momentum. You're good. You hit a roadblock and then you try and find your way around it, find trying to solution to it. And then you're taking option B instead of going down mm. option A kind of thing. You own this, the, the parking lot now yeah. The, yeah. or the, the used car dealership, if you yeah. will, or the land there. Yep. So how did you, cl you, you closed on that land or are you still conditional because of all of this other stuff that's come up? No, no, we closed, we closed mm. on that back in January. Yep. And so we've been working with our planner and our architect. And that's when we went through um, sort of the initial plans with the city. Yep. And that's where it came up of access and driveway access. And so then the easement laneway issue sort of resulted out of that. And that's what led us into those conversations with the, the two owners of that laneway. So we've been dealing with that. And then but then on the other side of the parking lot, this opportunity came up with the nonprofit and the building beside that, which could also relieve the laneway issue. Mm. Well, and I, I think it's a, a very typical real estate investing scenario, especially on the development side where it's like, okay, um, this may or may not pan out the way we hoped. <laughs> uh, right. So right. we're going to pivot. And, yeah. you know, I think that that's one of the things that I love about real estate investing. It's also one of the things that I'm sure like drives you crazy as it yeah. does me is just that things are never exactly probably the way you, you hoped they would be or, you know, like timelines and delays and uh, this, we always have these aspirations of going in with, you know, this is going to go perfectly <laughs> yes. smooth and everything's going to line yeah. up. Yeah. I haven't done a project like that, so, you know, ever. Right. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, you're a classic example of just having to pivot and looking at all the different opportunities yeah. of what's available on this site. Where do you think this project's going to end up? What do you think you're going to end up building on this site? I would love to say um, that we're, we're able to um, work with the nonprofit, integrate them in a meaningful way, um, set them up so that they're in a better position for the next 20 to 25 years to serve the community. And then for us, it means the opportunity to incorporate uh, affordable housing, mm -hmm. which is another big, big box on our, our particular uh, checklist that we want to be able to do. Yeah. And hopefully we can take the density and double it, right? We're talking 25 units. We'd like to see if we can push it up to 50. It might be 45 to 50, somewhere in and around mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. But that would be the goal, right? So residential, storefront commercial, keep the nonprofit, um, as Joe said, bake in a few a few give back programs there yeah. that provide them real sustainability. But that that's the ultimate, right? Is we'd like to be able to see if we can get the density up to about fifty percent is where we are now. Nice. I love how Ray and Joe have been able to take a challenging situation and work through it to create a win win for all of those involved. This is one of the best skills to have as a successful real estate investor. If you've got questions for Ray and Joe or for myself, leave those in the comments section below. If you want a copy of my free ebook, I'll leave a link for it below, or you can find it on my website at darrenvoros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.